choice for soccer today is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Man's Hygiene Bundle, the performance package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code SOCCERTODAY at manscaped.com. Ya lo hace, pierna derecha, directo al arco, golazo, golazo, golazo. The world of football with a soccer perspective. This is Soccer Today with Dwayne Rollins and Kevin Laramie, live on the Sports Podcasting Network. Good day, good night, welcome to Soccer Today for Friday, June 24th, 2022. Bon Saint-Jean-Baptiste, we'll be right back with the Saint-Jean-Baptiste tribute in just a minute to all my fellow Québécois. And of course, we'll invite you to click on that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be made aware of whenever we upload a brand new video. Dwayne, today it's a national holiday of Quebec, it is the Saint-Jean-Baptiste, and I want to take a second to start the show to wish a good Saint-Jean-Baptiste and bon Saint-Jean-Baptiste to all my fellow Quebecois and uh, let's have some good music. I just started my uh, 45 tours here in the back and uh, Le Dévidois, you know, traditional Quebecois music. Bonne Saint-Jean-Baptiste to all and Dwayne, as a tribute to start the show, let's review and reminisce a little bit about the best soccer player this province has produced. Patrice Bernier, in my opinion, is the best Québécois soccer player that ever existed. I'm privileged to call him a colleague at TVA Sport, and it's fun to look at his career numbers. He has been retired since 2017, the end of that season, and 159 games, 17 goals, 28 assists, a goals per 90 of .28. Every three games, he was involved in a goal-scoring aspect for a defensive midfielder that was amazing. Passing accuracy of 83.3 throughout his MLS career. And an all-star, forever an all-star in 2013. Bonne Saint-Jean-Baptiste to Patrice Bernier. Bonne Saint-Jean-Baptiste à tous les Québécois. So uh, I, I know you like vinyl, Dwayne. So uh, here's let's watch Dwayne's beautiful jersey of the Nordic de Quebec <laughs> and uh, his tribute to uh, the Quebec people. So that's uh, quite a great. Uh... There you go. Yeah, I thought I'd uh, wear something, uh, something to represent you back today. I know how much you love the Nordic, Kevin, uh, as a Habs fan yourself there. But uh, but yeah, we 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 missed them. At least some of us do. Um, maybe you're not you're not Canadian fans, but. Uh, but nonetheless, it was a good day. And Patrice, uh, he bridged the divide between the rivalry. Even Toronto fans, if you look deep in their soul, none of them have much bad to say. But she's been yet uh, a class <laughs> gentleman all around. Exactly. So once again, bon Saint-Jean-Baptiste to les Québécois, to les Québécoises. It's a day, Dwayne, that I have to say I'm quite happy that I am from Quebec, quite happy that I'm from Canada also in a day where terrible decisions have been taking in our friends down south and all the best to American women, if they're watching us, we're thinking of you today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't hide my political leanings uh, on Twitter. It says right in my bio that I don't keep politics. I keep, I don't keep politics out of it. I don't stick to sports, which is a ridiculous concept anyway. But nonetheless, look, um, we're not going to talk about that any more than that. Um, if you don't like our opinion on that, then, yeah. well... You know, well, yeah, there's choices exactly. to make. You can just turn it <laughs> off or turn it on. Whatever. Today, busy show. We will preview Major League Soccer's Week 16 action. And in the Canadian Premier League, we'll talk about Week 12 later today in the show. We'll talk about the All-Star Game being awarded to DC United yesterday. Commissioner Garber and multiple head of uh, multiple things were in DC to have a great press conference announcing how he feels as the host of the 2023 All-Star Game. We'll talk about Cucho Hernandez signing for Columbus earlier this week, which prompts a discussion in the biggest signings in MLS history, this being the seventh highest signing in MLS history. We'll look at that, and of course, we'll finish with the MLS and the Canadian Premier League preview. But let's start with the news of the day. Not quite breaking news, but it all started with Fabrizio Romano, which it often does. Let's look at what he's saying. The famous Italian news reporter, aggregator of news, tweet 
influencer. It's hard to say what he is, but here he is as news. Toronto FC now are set to announce Genoa's left back Domenico Crescito as their next signing. Done deal after agreement collapsed last March. Full agreement reached. Another Italian player is joining MLS side Toronto after Lorenzo Insigne. And we can look at his statistics with Genoa over the last four years. I didn't go too back in his career because I wanted to be relevant. And I want to draw your attention to the last stat here. To me, that's what's going to be really necessary for his play in Toronto. And this is recovery plus interceptions per 90. Throughout this four years in Genoa, the last four years, last four season, I aggregated the record recovery and the interceptions and divided by the amount of games played, which is 11. So 11 action per game that comes to a positive turnover on average by Domenico Crescito. You see his games, goals, assists, tackles, and everything. But to me, it's a player that will help Toronto get the ball more often in a position to drive it forward. It's going to be a positive signing for Toronto. Dwayne, we've talked about it last March. Now it's a done deal, according to Romano. What do you think about Crescito? I mean, the, there's a number on there that you don't have in the screen that people are going to be concerned about, and that's, of course, he was born in 1986. Not a young man anymore by soccer terms. A young man by every other term, but not by soccer terms, obviously. Um, you know, we joke on the show all the time about Italian age versus other nationalities age. There does seem to be an ability of Italian players to play later in the career. Not sure exactly why that is. Diet, lifestyle, who knows? But regardless, it does. it is there. Um, that said, you know, this is a guy that's clearly close to the end of the start. So th that's going to be the concern people have about this signing. They're going to look at it and say that this isn't necessarily the answer to solve all of TFC's problems. What I'd say to that is, I don't think any one player is the answer to all of CFC's problems. This is a piece that they needed to sort of address. And, and I do think that what he will do really well, I think first off, he's coming from Syria. Those numbers are from Syria, recent numbers. Going into MLS, like that's, it's going to be equatable at least. And that's a significant upgrade from what they're doing right now. So this is a good on the field decision. Will he play every day? I don't know. But I think mm -hmm. what he will do every day is train every day with a bunch of young players that are playing a similar position and hopefully help them become the professionals they need to do to get to the next level. And that's probably part of the thinking too. We can look at Toronto's lineup when they played against Montreal midweek in the Canadian Championship. And we look at the back line. And he will slot instead of O'Neill. That's where Crescito is slotted to play. He'll take the place of O'Neill in the middle of the side of the defense with Salcedo. That's where that duo is going to be efficient. Moving the ball forward to get the ball to Bradley and... Of course, Insigne will be there, and that's the link-up. So Bradley, and I'm sorry, Ralph Parizzo, but there's a very good chance that your number is not going to be there anymore, and we'll see number 10, Lorenzo Insigne. Well, maybe not, because Pozuelo's got the 10. Whatever number Insigne will have, he'll be slotted next there to Pozuelo, and that will be the midfield of Toronto, which has a clear Italian middle line of the formation, which should bring chemistry in FIFA terms, if you know what I mean, but will also bring a certain direct style with more experience. And I think that's where Bradley, Bob Bradley, saw deficiencies maybe in the youth of Toronto, and that signing of Crescito addresses that concern. Well, and look, we talked about this in March, as you said, because they had a deal in place at that time that fell through for, for reasons that aren't entirely clear. Um, they expected this player to be part of this team from the beginning. Another role that he will play is helping Insigne fit in. That's a lesson they perhaps have learned from the Jermaine Defoe fiasco. I mean, Jermaine Defoe played really well for 10 games and he got homestead. Maybe had he had a friend with him, he might have stayed a little longer and that, that deal would have worked out. Worked out in the end because they got Javinko. But nonetheless, you know, if they might have stayed around, it might have been a different conversation. So having some some friendly faces around um, for Insigne is, is likely part of this thinking too. There is reports in, in Italy that there might be another Italian coming as well. Uh, clearly, TFC is working those phones over in that part of the world. Uh, you know, it makes sense from a marketing perspective if, if you want to get into that. But but look, I, I think there is legitimate on the field reasons for this move. You mentioned he could play center half. He could also play left left fullback as well or left wing back, I should say. Um, I don't know whether he's going to do that in an MLS level play in the heat going up and down that pitch all the time. Maybe he's better suited to move more to the middle. But but it is a, a plug in position there if they need it. If, if Mavega is healthy, yeah. maybe you can get Mavega in. And Sosedo and and uh, uh, him out there as well. So so this is, it's a positive move. And we set up the top of the year. You can't, you know, if you go back to our previews, you can't fully evaluate TFC until you see what they look like after the window. And this is the first move 
that I think TFC fans hope the first of three or four moves because they do need to yeah. fill a lot of holes. Yeah, they do. And it's a work in progress with 2022 no pressure in MLS. There will be in a final of the Canadian Premier League. Uh, sorry, in the Canadian Championship. So already it's positive for there. But for TFC, there's no pressure of result in the league. And it's a time to reshuffle and rethink that model heading into next year with those new players that will be here for the rest of the season. But of course, next year. Next year is the big year for Toronto. Should be a quick turnaround with the amount of investment done by Toronto. Speaking of investment, let's talk about more investment earlier this week. The Columbus crew, yes, Columbus investing something very foreign in the same sentence. Cucho Hernandez, the seventh biggest signing, seventh biggest transfer in the history of Major League Soccer, has signed for 10 million plus of transfer fee with the Columbus crew from Watford FC in the Premier League. And Cucho Hernandez joins the Columbus crew. He's a striker from Colombia. And here are his statistics in the league, in the Premier League, because we can equivalent those results with the experience of other players in MLS. 25 games, 11 starts in the Premier League for Cucho. Five goals, 2.5 expected goals, two assists. A number that I thought was interesting going is his percentage of shot on target. So his shots total divided by his shots on target, almost 30%, 28.6% shots on target for Cucho Hernandez. That should translate to goals. That should translate to at least cre shot creating actions and goal creating actions in Major League Soccer. This could be a good sign for Columbus. They have struggled. The last few signings they have done over the last couple of years haven't panned out. What do you think about this big investment by Columbus? Well, it's almost, sorry, it's almost uh, double uh, outperforming his XG, which is interesting to me too, because that usually means one or two things. It either means they're outperforming against the meeting and they're going to regress, or it means they're one of those special quality players that is able to do something that you're not really expecting within the model. So that's to get a shot off quick, to find space that maybe others don't see, things like that that, that might inflate the uh, or deflate the XG number uh, in relation to what the actual chances are. It's an imperfect stat XG. It is subjective in many ways too, because you have to judge, you know, there is someone ultimately making yes, a judge if you exactly. don't know. <laughs> there, there's, it, a, there's somebody that says, well, I guess this should have been a goal. And they're like, well, yeah. that counts as a point something. And uh, there's also the yeah. algorithm and everything. So. Yeah, if it's the best way to look at XG, honestly, is to look at it in league, like inside its own league. Going league to league with it can get a bit dodgy because it's different subjective terms in terms of what you're doing. But nonetheless, look, I always look at signings like this and go look at the level they're coming from, look at the level they're going to, and look at past experiences for similar transfers. You've got a guy that's, you know, Watford's going down, obviously. So a guy that's in a lower level Premier exactly. League team um, coming to MLS. Championship level strikers usually do okay in MLS. So this is probably not a, a like title winning game breaker, but he might be a 10 to 15 goal score consistently in this league. Um, you know, South Americans, their value in MLS is overstated sometimes. There was a time when everyone said, claimed that they were always, oh, we always underestimate the South Americans. Just got the value in South America. It got to the point that, that value is gone now. Like there's too much money being spent in South Americans. We need to look elsewhere sometimes too to get value now because I think that, that that's been figured out. Uh, that market inefficiency has been corrected and now it's going the other way. Yes. So we'll see. Now you pay that's too that. much. Exactly. Now you pay too much and you don't have results. And we've seen a few teams get burned over the last few years with big, like the, the successful <laughs> signings are actually people that you don't hear about. So that's the interesting aspect but when we look at Cucho Hernandez and we look at expensive signings it prompts a conversation that we can look at our screen right now here are the most expensive signing the top eight in history and Dwayne we see Cucho Hernandez seventh at 10.5 million Luis Arojo is eighth with 10 million it could be a bit more depending on performances but we'll see for that for the future Pozuelo from Toronto is sixth with 11 million transfer Brenner Cincinnati may be the biggest disappointment of them all in there with 12 million. Rodolfo Pizarro, speaking of disappointment, he's in fourth with 12. Speaking of disappointment, once again, Ezekiel Barco with 15th. I guess when you're in this list, it comes with expectations and meeting these expectations are not easy. Even PT Martinez could say hasn't met these expectations when he was here. And Tiago Almada so far hasn't also met expectations, but it's very early in his case. What stands out when you look at this list and you see the amount of money spent 
mostly by Atlanta and other teams, but when you see Cucho Hernandez part of the discussion with Columbus, what is your thought? What's the hit rate there? About two? <laughs> I mean, that's my thought, is that spending big money isn't necessarily going to convert. It's, it's not always just about that. It's about the fit as well. Some of them was his biggest signings in history, of course, have come off free transfers because that's typically how they ran for years. This, this also is very recently weighted. That tells you a couple of things. It tells you the transfer market's inflating every year. I mean, it kind of got dulled a little bit by the pandemic, but it's just going to shoot through the roof again. It's just honestly, there's a lot of money in football. It's going to keep going up. Um, but as I said, look, spending money isn't always necessarily the right way to do it, but it is helpful if you have the money to spend. And this is an indication of a team like Columbus who wouldn't expect necessarily to spend a lot of money to spend some money, to make an investment, to commit themselves to that market. Um, you look at the attendance there, and I don't want to dwell on this. I thought it was interesting watching Austin play on there because, of course, that was the team that obviously they were going to be. Yeah. Um, they move. You look at the crowds down there, and you understand – I don't want to defend him because I don't like the idea of moving a team, but you understand what he was thinking about because it's night and day difference in terms of the atmosphere and the yeah. stands. And now they have also a brand new stadium and uh, new owners and the commitment going forward and hopefully uh, the answer in uh, the attendance department, which will be interesting. But speaking of new stadium and attendance, a new stadium that was opened a few years ago in 2018 will host the next MLS All-Star Game. Audi Field in Washington, D.C. will be the host of the 2023 All-Star Game and the festivities before this, of course. Commissioner Garber and D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser made the announcement yesterday, of course, with D.C. United representative, with representative of the... Well, I get organization itself, the president and other of D.C., the soccer... Uh, community and it will host this game that includes of course a lot of important aspects before the game there will be a showcase and a game with Howard University one of the most famous HBCU historically black university and college university and to me this is of course the alma mater of Gus Johnson famous sports commentator in the United States and Howard will be part of these festivities and it's a great time for soccer in the national capital today it's a bad day for that city because of what happened with roe v wade of course but for soccer here's a quote from the commissioner don garber talking about the 2023 all-star game you're going to look forward to a couple of things beyond the game. We're going to have the skills challenge. We're going to have great community events because it's not about just bringing our best players and putting on a showcase to a global audience. It's about doing things in the community that could leave a legacy for our club, a legacy for our city and a legacy for our sport. Those are the words of Commissioner Garber looking at the possibility of having a lot of great events surrounding this amazing game that will take place in 2023 in Washington, D.C. at Audi Field. We don't know yet the opponent or the format of that game that will come later this year. Probably after this year's version, we'll know what next year's version of the All-Star Game will look like. But this will be a great event for the soccer community in the Washington, D.C. area. And I'm happy for all my fans and friends of the show that are in the area or from the era that will probably congregate to D.C. next year to attend. A beautiful week of celebration for the beautiful game here in Major League Soccer, which brings us to the time to talk about our sponsor today, Manscaped. Manscaped, the worldwide leader in men's grooming product, is there to help you celebrate, of course, Sergio Batis and everything you want to celebrate very safely by grooming your personal area, your family jewels with safety. And with the Performance Package 4.0, you get the Shed Travel Bag that I have here in my hands. It's a perfect companion to put all your grooming tools inside, which the Performance Package 4.0 does include also Manscaped's anti-chafing boxers that are amazing for playing soccer, for a lot of activities, I have to say, and also very useful for all your daily purposes. The Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 the P40 
pièce de résistance, which is a French word in today's Saint Jean Baptiste, so I want to use more French word. And this pièce de résistance will help you get groomed. You won't get injured. It's an anti-nick technology with a ceramic guard that you can see right here. Very useful. It is waterproof. I've been using it in the shower with no issue whatsoever. And there's a light, so if your shower is a bit dark, you still know what you're doing. And uh, one of my friends was looking at this product and says, you know, when you cut the weed, the tree looks taller. So take that for what it's worth. But when you can find it for 20% off, and Dwayne is shaking his head on the other side of the camera, it's hilarious. You can find Manscaped's performance package at manscaped.com. You get 20% off when you enter the code SOCCER today at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free worldwide shipping at manscaped.com with the code SOCCER today. We'll be right back after this short break. Just before I say that, unlock your confidence and really always have the right tool for the job with Manscaped. We'll be right back after this short break. You are listening to Soccer Today. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Today SPN and like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash sports podcasting network. And we're back on Soccer Today. Kev Larmy here to talk about our Patreon. It's the shout out time. This time of the show where you can take a time to celebrate these beautiful human beings. And they are human beings that are beautiful because they have joined the Patreon shout out tier at patreon.com slash two solitudes. Where you get access to our Kenyan Men's National Team Focus and Canada Focus show. The road to Qatar, but also get a shout out. And I would like to give a shout out today to Jordan Kelman, who's been following this show for a long, long time. If you're watching us live, Jordan, a big hello to you. If you are watching on YouTube, please leave a comment and say hello. Also, love to hear from you. I hope everything's going well in your neck of the wood, in the part of uh, the prairies that you are in. My fellow Québécois in this list, Bonne Saint-Jean, Pierre, Bonne Saint-Jean, Patrick, Bonne Saint-Jean, Daniel, Bonne Saint-Jean, Sean. Ça fait du bien de vous voir, and uh, I hope you have a beautiful day. And patreon.com slash two solitudes for more Dwayne MLS weekend preview. A full slate, uh, kind of, 13 games out of possible 14 will take place this weekend in MLS it starts tonight. We have a Friday nighter in MLS. FC Cincinnati, Orlando to kick off the weekend. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting because I, I think Cincinnati had that great little stretch for them. They kind of cooled off a little bit. Um, where are they in what is a very interestingly weak East? Uh, it's still anyone's to take up and grab a hold of. Right? I mean, maybe not the top. I think New York and Philadelphia set themselves a little bit apart. But the rest of it, in, you know, Orlando, if they get a win here tonight, I think could actually maybe make a claim that they're, they're competing for the top two. So exactly, look, I, exactly. It's not indeed. a bad start to the week. It's a better game than we would have thought it was was when we saw the schedule <laughs> made up the start of the year. Yeah, you like Cincinnati D. That's going to be boring, yeah. but you're right. Orlando with the win, they would go with 28, and they would put pressure on the New York team heading into the weekend. Yes, they would have one more game play, but points on the board or points in the pocket. And if you win before the weekend starts, it gives you kind of like a leg up for just watching the games and knowing you already have those three points all right let's look at the rest of the schedule seattle kansas city and that's going to be a good game for seattle and kansas city they're on a little high after beating uh, omaha six nothing if you can call that a high but now reality is going to face uh, them because uh seattle's in their good part of the season they're they're peaking they're climbing and they're going to be quite the challenge for Kansas City this weekend. I'm expecting a good performance by the Sounders, which will be Montreal's next opponent midweek, which is also a fascinating aspect. Play both Toronto and Montreal in the next two weeks, so the so Canadian fans will have a lot of opportunity to watch the Sounders play, who, as you say, this is, we're entering Sounder time. Uh, they like this uh, to ease into a season. Of course, they want a CCL this year, as they'll likely remind us forever and ever. Um, that maybe that's too harsh. I don't know. It's not too. Hard. It's accurate though. Uh, however, they they gave ease themselves into the season. They're starting to climb up, and you would expect them to be in the playoffs. Uh, Kansas City, look, they're very similar to Toronto and Vancouver in the sense that they have a final to play for, and I think the 
the, the rest of their, their preparation for the summer is going to be geared around setting themselves up to be successful in that final because it's their opportunity to make something of a season that yeah. looks like it it might not be much else. Exactly. Uh, DC United and Nashville will see if DC United can be propelled by the announcement of them hosting next year the All-Star Game because, well, they are struggling so far in the league. They are 13th in the Eastern Conference, and if they can get a win at home against Nashville, it could be good. Nashville is a team that plays well at home, but can they play as good on the road we'll see montreal charlotte Dwayne, this is an important one for montreal a must win a six point game a team that will battle montreal for a playoff spot and montreal might have and of course i'm gonna i'm gonna weigh my words carefully here and not wanting to i uh, wanted to thread carefully but charlotte could be a depleted team more on that maybe later tonight or tomorrow but charlotte is going to be a difficult game for them in montreal montreal will have a fresh team having made seven changes to their last starting 11 midweek yes they lost for nothing but when you lose as big you have something to get yourself forgive about and montreal will face charlotte with maybe a dominant performance still love to see yeah yeah, quickly on those two games uh we had a little camera issue on my end so i couldn't uh, comment on the all-star game what I hope they play, Kevin, is crab soccer. That's you know, I, I would watch that. Otherwise, I, I don't really care. You know, crab, you see sure. in gym when you're in for us. And anyhow, I'm, I'm not a big all-star fan. If you do the show, uh, we'll probably talk about that in in sense that I won't talk about it in a few weeks. Um, look, Montreal, if you're on the 50-yard line and you punt to try and pin the team, you damn well better not let, let the score a touchdown, right? To use a, another sport analogy, Montreal was on the 50-yard line of the Canadian Championship. They decided to punt. Yep, better win. Better win. Yep, yep. And Toronto, Atlanta, that's another interesting aspect. Atlanta sliding in the standings, be it the amount of injuries, but Atlanta's Jose Martinez is back and playing well, and this could spell doom for Toronto. Atlanta will maybe famously doesn't travel as good, but it's going to be a difficult game at Vimo Field, 7.30 p.m. Saturday evening. Um, we talked a lot about TFC yesterday, so I'm not going to belabor it here, but it's the first of four home games in a row. Um it before Insigne comes into the lineup and other reinforcements, this is their season. Um, if they don't get a, more than half of the points available in this homestand, I think maybe you can realistically write the season off. It's about setting up for next year. If they can get maybe two thirds of the points available in this homestand, then then I do think you're still in, in line for a playoff position if you can get the new new additions rolling quickly. So so this is a big one for them. And that way, Atlanta historically has not played very well at you in mm-hmm. uh, Bemo Field. They've uh, uh, they've had, you know, some, they've lost a lot, they, including them when they won the Sports Shield in 2018. They finished their season there. They ended up getting spanked in the last game of the season. They actually point to it Atlanta internally as, as a big motivator for them heading into that playoff run for them. So, so yeah, big, big game for TFC, I'd say. Used in Chicago, that'll be an interesting aspect of uh, the East and the West, two teams that are well, struggling this year so far. But, you know, it's, uh, it's a game, Dwayne. It will be a game that will happen tomorrow at 8 p.m. I'll be busy working on the Montreal game anyway. So I won't. It's not the one that I'll be looking at the score most closely. Miami, Minnesota. That one's actually quite interesting. Austin, Dallas, Salt Lake, Columbus. And the last game, Saturday night, Portland, Colorado. I am interested in Portland, Colorado because. Out of those two teams, something will have to give. And I think if Colorado can get a victory, Colorado is back into a playoff position. If Portland gets another loss, depending on what San Jose does, which not going to be anything because they're off this weekend, Portland won't be last, but they might be uh, in trouble still. And that, uh, that to me is what does Colorado perform under pressure will mark anthony k continue his run of form he's been playing well lately with his first assist of the season a couple of games so will colorado be able to get the victory tomorrow night that's my well that's where i would go if i had to wager um i am to i want to go in portland for a second here i think they're being underreported what's happening there this this year i, I hear a lot of people talk about kansas city struggles Obviously, here in Canada, TFC always gets a lot of attention. Their their inability to, to defend is, is getting a lot of attention. Um, it's just, when you talk about Kansas City, obviously, as I mentioned a minute ago, when you talk about Portland, no one's really talking about this team that was in the MLS Cup final last year. You know, I had a hunch that because of some of the off-field stuff that was going on there, um, on multiple levels, that there might be a struggle in there this year, and, and you're sort of seeing it bear fruit. So we'll, we'll watch that one quite closely the rest of the way. 
No, I agree. And uh, if I had to choose, I would go an upset there. If I had to maybe wager a little bit at uh, Bet US, well, I would go with Colorado on the road. You get the favorable odds, and you get a team that is starting their ascent in the standings. And that will be an interesting aspect. Let's finish by looking at the next couple games on Sunday. LAFC New York. Can LAFC continue their great run of form in the Western Conference? They're dominating the standings in the Western Conference. Can they continue that run? They will be facing, of course, the Red Bull, who are also on a run the red bulls over the last few weeks they've done well at home they've done well in the u.s open cup eliminating their rival earlier this week speaking of the rivals nycfc they are traveling to philly and will be playing at subaru park versus the philadelphia union sunday 6 p.m very fun matchup two very good team in the eastern conference the best team in the eastern conference and nycfc facing philly who has failed to answer the bell this year with the expectations but are only one point behind so they're still very close in that conversation of top team in the eastern conference and that's quite the battle philly nycfc at subaru park and vancouver new england to finish the weekend on Sunday evening. Yeah, New York, the Red Bulls. I'm going to use an analogy here. Everyone's familiar with the old fable with the tortoise and the hare, right? Like, I'm sure that's universal. The tortoise slow and steady wins the race. Um, well, la, 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 la lièvre et la tortue in, uh, in Saint Jean Baptiste in French to, uh, for our there, friends. There, there you go. Um, the Red Bulls are the tortoise to me in this analogy. Now, that's ironic because they play high press, high tempo system, but. What I mean by that is they are always just consistent on this base level. They always sort of play here. And good teams will jump above them often, and they will have years where there's five or six teams that are much better than them. Uh, but years like this, where everyone in the East is sort of spinning their wheels or treading water or however one analogy you put, they're still steady right there around three, four this year. So, you know, one of these years, I think the Red Bull plan is that one of those years, if you just slow and steady win the race, you <laughs> might end up in the final. It's and true. if you're in the final, who knows? <laughs> it's true. And they do have a quite a couple players that I would take in my club tomorrow morning. I really like John Tolkien, not only because he wears a mullet, because he has the courage to wear a mullet, and he does have the type of game that comes with it, which means a whole lot. But yes, it's a team that I have a lot of time for. And players like Tom Edwards and going... Caranel, I like the goalkeeper too. So New York, yes, New York is a good team. And they will have a good matchup this weekend. But that being said, we hope you enjoyed the show this week. You can follow Dwayne at 24th Minute, myself at Kev Larme, and this show at Soccer Today. SPN will be back. Oh, actually, no, I'm saying goodbye, Dwayne. No, wait, I forgot one thing. I forgot one league. I All forgot right. our league. I forgot the Canadian Premier League. Here's the uh -huh. schedule for the Camp EL for this weekend. One game Saturday, Pacific FC versus the Wanderers. One of the biggest travel, one of the biggest away day in the worldwide game is the Wanderers traveling to Pacific FC. York United Sunday versus Valor. And on Sunday, Cavalry versus FC Edmonton. Then on Wednesday, Valor plays also against Forge. And on the road too, a two game road trip for Valor. Will that affect their decision in the starting lineup? Which game will you really not miss in these four, Dwayne? Um, I'm curious to watch Pacific Halifax. Both these teams are coming off some poor results of recent. Uh, you would expect a little bit more out of both sides. So so that one is going to be interesting to, to kick off the, the week. Um, I always watch Forge. I think that they're really starting to roll now. Uh, I would pay close attention to them to continue to climb up those standings moving forward. Yeah. Caught in a drink, sorry. <laughs> like, nah, that's fine, that's fine. And uh, speaking of the table, let's look at the table in the can -BL before we say goodbye. Cavalry is top of the table with 20 points. Pacific is second with 19. Atletico Ottawa, the surprise of this season so far. But if you go back to our preview show months ago, we previewed Atletico as being way better than we thought because of the system and the amount of players that comes from the Madrid system and have familiarity, chemistry, it speaks loud in the can -PL. Forge FC 4th, but on the way up. HFX Wanderers 5th, York United 6th, Valor 7th, and FC Edmonton last in 8th, but they got to win, finally, a record of 174. That's your table in the Canadian Premier League, Dwayne. 
if if you look at Valor's record post bubble last year when they came out of the had they hosted the bubble in Winnipeg and, and came out of that in first place, from there till now, they are almost as bad as Edmonton in terms of the record. So there there's a story to be had there. Valor's never been a program that's been able to yeah. to put it together yet. There there is a there is a clear top in the KPL and there's a clear bottom. <laughs> and there's a couple of teams in the middle. But yeah. uh let's not forget Valor did make a coaching change following last year's season. They fired Robert Gale and the Farmer Bigel is now working in the New York City region in the world of football, which we wish him all the best if he is listening. And they have hired Philip Dos Santos as their manager in Winnipeg. And so far, we haven't seen the results, so it's something that we should keep an eye on going forward. But going forward, we hope you enjoyed this week's show. You can find every aspect and podcast version of this show everywhere you find your favorite podcast, which means Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, and everywhere else, Podcast Addict, and more. You can find the Two Solitudes podcast at patreon.com slash two solitudes, and you can get the Two Solitudes podcast and the shout-out tier available at that place. If you need help with your content creation in the technical, the digital area, and if you need help with creating graphics, you can contact myself or my colleagues at Spin Media Digital Solutions. And before we say goodbye, I want to say thank you to Manscaped, and you can get 20% off at manscaped.com on the performance package and everything else, and free shipping worldwide with the code SOCCER today at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence and always have the right tool for the job at Manscaped. As always, until next time, for Dwayne Rollins, I'm Kev Laramie. We wish you a great soccer. You can find the podcast version of all the shows we do on iTunes, Apple Podcast, Google Play Store, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and anywhere you get your podcasts.